Good morning, and I am so excited today. I'm excited today because I have the results of my survey. Now, you know there are mice experiments out there. There's cell culture. There's all sorts of biochemical results, but what we really want to hear from are the humans. How are the humans doing with NAD precursors? And that's what this survey was all about. So what I did is I came up with 10 questions. So everybody would be talking about the same thing. Because if you look at the sky, one person will say, oh, it's eggshell blue, it's cerulean. It's, you know, we wanted to say, okay, is the sky blue today? Is it gray today? Uh, is it raining? Whatever. So we wanted to find out what the different people were saying, but make them speak the same language. So I'm gonna put up a bunch of pie charts. The first 10 questions, they aren't that interesting, but I actually found out something from the data that is really going to help some of you save some money. So let's get started. The first question, and let's put up the first pie chart, was, do you take an NAD precursor and what do you take? Okay, so what I found out was that 35% took nic nicotinamide riboside, 25.6% took nic nicotinamide plus pterostilberine, you know, the stuff from blueberries, and only 17.5%, or sorry, 0.9% took NMN. So let's go on to pie chart two. The second question was, how much do you take a day? So the second question was, how much do you take a day? 56.4% took 500 milligrams a day, 30.8% took 125 milligrams or less, and a tiny 7.7% .7 took 1,000 milligrams or more a day. And the next question I asked was, well, how do you take it? Because, you know, some people like to mix it in their coffee. Some people mix it with, you know, take it in a capsule. Some people take it under their tongue. So what did most people take? Okay, so let's look at the next chart. Okay, 65% uh, of the people took it as a capsule and 20% of it took it sublingually. And there are a few other creative options there if you could take a look at, and I'm just not going to talk about some of them. Okay, now the fourth chart was how long have you been taking it? Because obviously things take a while to build up in your system. You take things for like one day or something, like you're sick, you take an antibiotic and you take it for one day, oh gee, I'm not better yet. So how long did we have to take it to see a result? Let's take a look and see how long people took it, okay? 21% had been taking it for more than a year. 35% for less than six months, 18.4 more than six months, but less than a year. Okay, so you get the feeling that if people are taking it for more than a year, they're probably seeing some sort of result with it. You know, you just don't keep taking something if it's doing nothing. So that's an inference I'm making for this. Let's bring up the next chart. Okay, okay, now this is more interesting. What results did we see? 7.9% actually had some improvement in a clinically measured response, such as, say, blood pressure or a blood chemistry or cholesterol or something like that. I don't know exactly what they were, but some actually were able to actually measure a difference. A strong 52% of them noticed an increase in activity, and another strong 39% noticed an increase in strength. There were a handful of other responses, including no change, um, and I can actually tease out some of the reasons some people saw no, cha no change a little bit later on. Uh, the other thing, we can have some conf confounding results because what if it wasn't the NAD precursor but because they had a certain diet they were following or because they were doing a certain amount of exercise or a certain type. So the next questions actually the next questions actually had to do with that. So let's move to the next chart. So, 50% of the people involved are engaged in resistance training, and 55% were engaged in some, for, some sort of aerobic training, and only 15% were couch potatoes. Now, the eighth question referred to age. How old were the people? And oh, I also had a chart here on how often people exercise, and I'll put that up for a second, okay? Okay, now the eighth question referred to age. How old were the people? 
28% were 50 to 59, 28% were 40 to 49, 23% were 60 to 69, and 10% were 40 and under, and 10% were over 70. Okay, now this is going to become significant in just a little bit. Now the ninth question was about perception. Perception is, was how do you look and feel? Usually if our skin is clear and bright and our coloring is good, it's an indicator of good health. If someone's sallow and pale and yellow, it's an indication of lesser health. So 91% said they did look and feel younger than their age. So I infer most of the respondents were in pretty good health and lo looking after themselves, such as the exercise chart indicates. And the 10th question was about diet. I was kind of hoping here that we would see, oh, we're having great results and we're 90% of us are following a certain diet. So the diet was pretty much all over the chart. Uh, the largest numbers were 35% are low carb, 30% are omnivores and eat everything, and 15% are pescatarian and focus on fish. And then there are lots of other variations on eating lots of meat or veggies or happily consuming junk. Let's move on to some extra data crunching. Why didn't some people see results? Is there something we can figure out why some people are seeing results and others aren't? Yes, I'm that smart. Anyhow, we took a look and let's flip the analysis and take a look at who didn't get results and what they did. First, the dosage. 37% of them were taking 500 milligrams, 42% were taking 125 milligrams, and 11% each were taking 750 and 100 milligrams. And drum roll, what age were they? 47% of the people not getting results were under 50. 5% were under 40. So more than 50% of those not responding were younger, under 50 years old, 25 or 59, 50 to 59 years old. So it seems it may be work better for those of us that are a little bit older and need our NAD levels boosted up because they've fallen. But if you have a baseline that's kind of normal, it doesn't seem to do anything extra. Okay. Now this is 40 people. It's not a clinical trial. Uh, so let's go to the literature. Is there anything in the literature that supports this? that it works for us older people, but not as well for the younger people. Well, let's take a look. Come on, paper, paper, paper. Here we go. Um, acute nicotinamide riboside supplementation improves redox homeostasis and exercise performance in old individuals in a double-blind crossover study. And what did they find? Their conclusions were, NR supplementation increased NAD, pH levels, decreased oxidative data stress, and improved physical performance only in old subjects, substantiating that redox supplementation may be beneficial only in individuals with antioxidant deficiencies. Well, I'm going to keep taking my 500 milligrams a day. I'm going to keep exercising and doing my resistance training. And I'm going to keep eating my Mediterranean diet because I don't think that uh, any particular diet is going to give you you know, anything better results than the other. And different diets, I think, are more suited for different people. So anyhow, until next time, oh wait, and one more thing. Next time I'm going to be doing the book review on David Sinclair's book on how we can live longer. So keep your eyes open for that. And until next time, this is Judy Chalice with Lifespan and Longevity. I hope you learned something today.